My next guest is among the Republicans who is now calling for Dr. Fauci to step aside. Senator Marco Rubio of Florida joins us now. Senator, always good to have you with us. Thank you so much Thank for you. being here. Thank um, you. I want to play one more soundbite from Dr. Fauci here, uh, talking about masks, and then I'd love to you to tell me why you and this other group of your colleagues feel this way. Watch this. That issue with masks is people want to fire me or put me in jail for what I've done, namely follow the science. Right. I could go the next half an hour going through each and every point I that know. they make. It's, it's preposterous. Senator, what's your reaction to that? And why do you feel strongly that he needs to step aside? Here's what's happened with Dr. Fauci, who I didn't dislike and actually defended early on in the pandemic. And that is, you know, he's now, you know, he's gotten on the cover of magazines. He's become this national figure. He enjoys, I think, a little bit the celebrity that's come with it and the role that he's played, almost like a super political, super governmental role as the central authority that everybody has to listen to. I think he's gotten you know, high on his own supply a little bit here in regards to this. And I think it's gone too far in many cases. It's not that he's speaking out publicly. You see the, the statements that he's now making. He sounds more like a political figure than he does like a healthcare expert. But that's not the reason why I think he should be fired. I think the reason he should be fired is because he's lost a tremendous amount of credibility among the American people. I think he's actually done very significant damage to public health. People, the next time we have a pandemic, are going to remember a time and era where Dr. Fauci knew certain things that we now knew he did, and he either kept them from the American people or lied by omission. Uh, for example, on, on discrediting anyone who even raised the possibility that COVID originated because there was an accident in a lab in, in Wuhan, China. And there's a lot of reasons to believe that's possible, as, at, at least as possible as the zoonotic, uh, which is what he's talking about from an animal to a human. I mean, Wuhan is a major metropolitan center, large, enormous city. There aren't any bats in Wuhan. They still have not produced the animal that it jumped over from. And we know that in the laboratory that coincidentally happens to be located in that city, they conduct experiments on how you can genetically change a virus that occurs naturally to make it infectious and even to make it more infectious to humans. He knew all this and he's tried to either lie or lie by omission and he's lost all credibility and not just in my mind, the mind of a lot of Americans. He's now actually doing harm to science. He's not helping science. No. Um, Senator, I want to ask you about another big topic in America, and Florida has just moved to ban the teaching of critical race theory. Very moving testimony yesterday by a mom in Virginia who survived Maoist China before she came to the United States, and she says she sees comparisons between what she experienced there as a child and what she's seeing here now. Watch this. I've been very alarmed about what's going on in our school. You are now teaching, training our children to be social justice warriors and to loathe our country and our history. This is indeed the American version of the Chinese communist, the Chinese cultural revolution. The critical race theory has its roots in cultural Marxism. It should have no place in our school. She got a huge round of applause uh, for that in Virginia. Senator, your thoughts on where this is going and uh, whether or not the tide is turning on this? I think there's hysteria. I think this is part of a broader hysteria, but also a concerted effort to rewrite the story of America. Critical race theory at its core is basically a theory that teaches that Americans are divided between oppressors and oppressed. Uh, oppressors, even though you may not have individually have oppressed anybody, is inherently evil and need to apologize for things that people did in the past that you had nothing to do with. The oppressed never do anything wrong, and it constantly divides America into these two classes. It goes on to tell the story of an America that for 240 years has been a symbol of hatred, prejudice, bigotry, uh, white pa pa patriarchy, and things of this nature. Not only is it an inaccurate reading of our history, but I actually think it's indoctrination, all headed towards a political aim, which is what the, I mean, this was a crazy faculty club theory just 10 years ago that now finds itself in the curriculum of our public school systems across the country.